At the time of this video, Disney Dreamlight Valley has been out for about three weeks. If you've been playing since the release, you're more than likely at the end game where you are amassing a large pile of coins that would cause even Scrooge McDuck to go into a jealous fit like Donald. Of course, this is done by growing pumpkins, selling them straight up or turning them into pumpkin puffs and selling them for much more. And I bet a good amount of you are not cooking every single pumpkin into a pumpkin puff. And no one blames you. After all, who has the time to sit there and constantly click for thousands of pumpkin puffs? Well, today's your lucky day. I'm going to show you how to create a macro to cook pumpkin puffs so you can set it and forget it. Now, let me show you how the macro works and how to create it. So here I am in front of my house and I put a stove in front of my house because I just love nature, I love the valley, and I like cooking outdoors so I can enjoy everything here. But there's also a practical reason why I'm doing this. It's because when you cook at the Chez Remy location, it's actually a little ah, bit slower than if you- This would be a perfect day to be at sea. That's great, Eric. Thank you for sharing that with us. It's slower if, than if you cooked on the stove. So st cooking on the stove is much faster than at Chez Remy. So I have pumpkins and I have coal and I have eggs and I have cheese. So let's go ahead and go into the menu here. Now, first things first, you're going to need to select the puff or excuse me, the recipe for the puffs. So you have it selected and you're at this window. Now I'm gonna go ahead and fire off the macro, but I've only set it to do it once because I don't need to make the 649 puffs at the current moment. So here I go, I'm just gonna demonstrate it. Boom, all I did was push one button and it did it all for me. Now imagine being able to do that and setting it to continue doing it for 647 times without ever touching the keyboard after you fire off the macro. And it goes that fast throughout the entire time. So to begin with, what I want to mention is, hello Elsa, how are you? She uh, could smell the pumpkin puffs and came over here for a bite. First thing I want to mention is I'm using a Corsair K55 keyboard. I'll go ahead and put a link in the description. It's not an affiliate link. I'm not making any money. I'm just showing what I'm using, how to do it. And hopefully someone out there will be like, yeah, I want to take advantage of that. I'm going to go ahead and do that. That way I can make more money off to the side with using less effort. Okay, so let's go ahead and go back into the menu here. Recipes and pumpkin puffs. Okay, now in the IQ software, which is the software that comes with the keyboard, this is what you're gonna do to be able to create the macro. And then we're gonna go into the advanced settings to be able to set it up so that you can be able to create the pumpkin puffs. And I'll explain the reason why you wanna go into the advanced settings when we get in there. But trust me, that's something you're gonna to wanna to do. Okay, first things first is that we need to get the mouse to go over the autofill button. Now what we're gonna do is create a new event. So this button right here is, what's, uh, is what creates the new event. And we have this drop down here that gives us our different selections. So what we're gonna do is move the mouse. So we're gonna do mouse event. And we're gonna make this absolute. The difference between relative and absolute is that absolute has to do with the location of the mouse on the number of pixels. Okay, I guess that doesn't really make sense. So let me try to explain it this way. The top left corner is pixel zero, zero. Okay, so if I go ahead and hit yes here, that's the uh, location. And I have it mapped to this button. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and show you. I'm gonna hit the macro. And you see where my mouse is? It's up in the upper left corner. That's, that's uh, pixel zero, zero. So let's go ahead and edit this and play with the X axis. So that's going left to right. So positive will always be from the left to the right. If you negative would be going, it, it, you'll only be using negative when you're doing the, the relative because relative is to where the location of the mouse is at that moment. Okay, so absolute, we're gonna guess 
I'm going to guess um, 1,200. Let's see where that puts us. Yes. Okay. We're not quite far enough that we need to be. So let's go ahead and change that. Let's do 1380. Yes. Okay, I think that's far enough. Now let's go ahead and change the Y location. And I'm going to do 890. Maybe that'll do it. Yes, perfect. That's exactly where we want the mouse to be at. Now from here, what we want to do is get to click. In my experience, I'm going to go ahead and give you this tip. In my experience, you want to put a bit, little bit of a delay in between all the actions that you do. So we're going to give this 200 milliseconds. 1,000 milliseconds equals one second. So this is just kind of like a moment here, right? Okay, now our next event is that we want to click on that button. So we're going to do a mouse event and left click it. Yes. And okay, now that we've made it click the autofill, we need to give it a second to be able to add all the ingredients to the squares. So we're going to give it a full second. Let's go ahead and test that. Ta -da. Okay. Maybe a second is more than what we need, but I'm going to keep it a second. If you want to, you can play around with the exact timing to be able to maximize the amount of time it takes. Just keep in mind that your computer may run slow. Maybe you have lag. I'm not sure, but that's just something to think about. Okay, the next event that we want to have happen is moving the mouse over the start cooking. So move the mouse, and we're going to make it absolute, and we're going to guess here 900. And I think that was 890, so we're going to do 920. This is guessing here. Ah, not far enough down. So let's go ahead and change that. Let's do nine, oops, 960. Ooh, that is barely on there. So I'm gonna give it a little bit more space. Oops. Let's give it another go. Okay, perfect. It's exactly where we need it. Now the next few things that we're gonna do is have it click on that. So mouse event, and we're gonna have it click. Oh, you know what? I remembered. We need to give it a moment. So we'll give it a moment here. Now, after clicking it, it's going to do an animation of it doing the cooking. Okay, so we're going to give it a full three seconds. So 3,000. Yes. And then after the animation, you can click, you have to click it to get it back to this screen, this cooking screen. Okay, so we're going to give it, uh, we have to click again. Uh, mouse event. Left click, and after that, I'm gonna give it two seconds for it to get back to, to the cooking screen, okay? Two seconds, 2,000 milliseconds, yes. Okay, let's take off the ingredients, and let's see how our Mac will go. Auto fill, cooking, animation, click the screen, Ta-da, all done. All right, now we have the macro set up. The next thing we need to do is be able to tell it how many times to do it. So if you go over to the advanced settings, on the trigger, on action trigger, you're gonna wanna change this to toggle. The reason why you wanna do toggle is because if you screwed something up, or maybe you need to stop the cooking so that you can go, let's say, water the pumpkins you're growing while you're cooking these ones. You need to be able to stop at any point. If you don't have it on toggle, it's just gonna keep going and going and going. And the way you're gonna to get to stop is by crashing your computer and rebooting it. So turn it to toggle. Trust me on this, turn it to toggle. 
Okay, action repeat. It's on no repeat, so it's only going to do it once. But you can have it repeat constantly with a delay in between each repeat, or you can tell it how many times you can repeat. So for demonstration sakes, plus I don't think I have this much coal, I'm going to set it to five. So it's going to do it once, and it's going to do it five times. So in case, I'm just going to do it four, because I want to do it five times total. That is all you have to do to set it up. So we have the ex uh, we have the steps on what to execute, and we have what to do once we start the execution. So let's go back over here. I'm going to fire it off. This is one. There's two. There's three. There's four. And that's five. So this is probably the fastest way in which you can cook all the pumpkins without having to sit here and spam click you know the the autofill cook autofill cook you can literally as the expression goes set it and forget it and you can do this while you're sleeping if you work from home you can you can uh fire it off and kind of passively check on it i mean as long as you're not working on the same computer um, or even if you do go somewhere else to work, you just leave your computer on and just let it fire off until it's done. And that is the way to maximize the amount of money that you get from your farming at Endgame. If you like this video, go ahead and click the uh, like and hit the subscribe button and I'll send out some more tips on tricks on what to do in Disney Dreamlight Valley. See you next video. Bye!